All right, boys and girls, humans and pets, ladies and gentlemen. I think I got the sequence reversed. Doesn't matter. Welcome back to the 2021 World Rift Asia Brawl Playoff. We're in a day two match shoot between DRE Sports and Chakaimook, was currently DR Esports one point ahead. Can Chikaimu even up the scoreboard and take us to a game three in the second match today, just like last match? We shall find out. So without further ado, let's quickly send you to Caster's desk. Thank you very much, Dave. And like you say, we are in game two of this best of three series. DR Esports with a pretty dominant performance in game one as expected of them. They have been doing so all tournament long, and let's see if they can continue to assert that dominance and take game number two and face off against Sengoku in the next round. I am gonna be waiting with Beta Breath to see what happens. But joining me, obviously, is Infinity. Infinity, we have an Akali ban, we got an Oriana ban, starting off here with Aurelian Soul, first pick of the draft. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen Aurelian Soul. I think we've seen it every single series. For, for this tournament as of yet for the uh, first matches or like first brackets of the uh, playoffs, right? And it's actually quite big because Orion Soul has a lot of CCs, has a lot of AoE potentials against the enemy team. And on top of all of, uh, you have the ultimate of Orion Soul that could really knock up the enemy team as well by a bit. So I think it's just a lot of CCs and a lot of damage overall and even the poking potentials coming from the the, the the orbs that come around the rhythm so that you're pretty massive as well when it comes to DPS potential. So yeah, very formidable pick coming into the side of DR Esports. And for Chakai Mok, we have that Olaf and Lulu. Once again, these duos are very strong when it comes to initiating a fight. We've seen it earlier today, we've seen it yesterday with these two duos. Olaf just dominating the arena with the, the Unstoppable with the Ragnarok and the ultimate, the Lulu to top it all off. So it's pretty massive coming in for Chakai Mook for game number two in terms of the front lines. Yeah, it looks like there's they're kind of going with a couple of flex picks if you're talking about Chakai Mook, right? Um, Olaf mm -hmm. can obviously go on the sideline and kind of punish anyone who is a bit weaker in that lane or is more reliant on sustain. Um, he can also go in the jungle as well, obviously really, really good in both roles, whereas uh, it feels like the Lulu, it, yeah, she in most of the time play support, but the way that she can pair with so many different types of champions that I think that's gonna <clears throat> really help Shakai Mook out because they can go in a, a mul you know, multiple different directions. Obviously there are some uh, ADCs that can pair well with that wild growth uh, as well as the you know attack increase with her uh, shield. So they've gone to with the Draven who we haven't seen in quite a while, uh, but following up with the Garagas as well. Uh, meanwhile, D DR Esports, they're continuing their last two picks and going with a uh, potentially an interesting ADC. But before they get to that, they've already picked Jarvan, who was recently buffed in the most recent match. Yeah. And the problem with Draven and the reason why we don't see him that often is because of its scaling potential. Like earlier in the match, very, very strong in terms of damage. He's just dominating the early game. But what comes next? Mid game, late game? It's gonna be very hard because you can easily pick off the Draven by a thread. So it's just easy kill coming in from DR Esports. So uh, I think Chakai Mook really wants to take over the early game potential for their team so that later on they could win it out. I think we might see a jungler here because I feel like, I feel like with DR picking Darius, yeah. I think you really want to have the Olaf in that lane. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be going towards the Shivana. Um, we haven't seen Shivana in a while. And even when she was picked quite a bit, she wasn't really that successful. But the the one time, the one little area she was successful was right when Lulu came out. And we saw some incredible Lulu Shivana engages from that team. So that looks to be what Chikaimuk is going for. Um, that's really the reason why they picked Olaf first in the, in the first place, because they wanted to have that flexibility. They now get to put Olaf against the Darius, which is a good matchup for him. And they have their good engage with the Lulu going off with the Shivana. Yeah. Uh, now it's going to be very important for Shivana to go for the Dragon, right? If they don't go for the Dragon, Shivana won't scale that much. Because the skills of Shivana scale out heavily depending on the Dragon's taken. If you get the dragon buff, you get true damage from your skill shots, and the rest goes to follow. 
for Shivana's side. And that, that is the reason why Shivana is, isn't really that picked often. And yes, sure, he has a lot of damage potential AoE and even initiations coming for the ultimate. But if you that, don't get that dragons up and running for your team, what is gonna scale out for Shivana? And you better go off with something more, you know, sustainable in terms of those initiations but on this side for Chakai Mok, I think they really want to go big time for game number two they have the early game big time for their event for their draft and they have the potential scaling champion with Shivana for their draft as well yeah like you mentioned that's the reason why Shivana isn't picked that often is because her passive can be completely nullified by taking the dragon from her uh, for those of you who don't know we can kind of elaborate further her, her passive basically each one of her abilities uh, gets buffed once she takes a dragon um i think and um each one of her first three abilities and i believe with one of the, one of the uh other dragons her health pool is increased when she uh goes into a dragon form so <clears throat> that's what's on the line for her as she tries to take that but again i think i think this is definitely just a nod to the fact that they already have lulu and no one really has the kind of engage from the jungle position that uh that shivana has as, as far as engaging from a far distance you know while while having cc with it and then being able to get into the fight uh from that jungle position usually it's something like a malphite right or perhaps um an alistair but uh typically you don't see that from the shivana so that's going to be their plan going forward let's see if chikaimu can do it of course we've put a lot of emphasis on the draft so far because you know it can certainly make the difference but Infinity DR were so dominant in game number one. I'm not I'm not really sure it's gonna make a difference who these teams pick right now. Uh they have to step up step up rather for the side of CKM if they really wanna win this fight. And considering that they have picked out, you know, the early game ADC going in for their team, they really wanna go for aggressive early game to try and disrupt the Corky, the Alstar, the AD Selene, and even potentially affect other lanes as well. So they want to do this successfully, and if they do, it's going to be punishable against uh, DR Esports, considering they also have the Corky, which really needs to go for that damage output uh, potential, and even the Oriel and Soul. So yeah, I mean, early game, CKM. Mid game, late game, I think DR Esports is going to take it away. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that's one of the reasons why DR were a bit apprehensive as far as their, their picks later on. They were hovering the uh, Teemo for a second, but then they're like, oh, we can't really go with that. And even the Corky is a bit weak against the Draven. Like, normally you wouldn't mm -hmm. think about Draven being able to dominate a matchup, but uh, Corky likes to kind of get in there, whereas the Draven's going to be like throwing his axes from pretty far away. So in the early game, <clears throat> Corky's going to have a little bit of trouble. Uh, same thing actually goes with the... Um, the uh, Darius over in the top lane gonna have a little bit of trouble dealing with that as we have a potential gank coming in but here comes the Royal Charge to try to help that out unable to do so though as Darius does go down DR is gonna have to turn tail and run is this is this also another uh, I feel like the the early game kind of hurts for for DR right even the um the Jarvan is having quite a bit of trouble matching the Shivana in, in these rotations so just kind of behind all around for DR Chikai Mook feels like they need to take advantage yeah but overall, I think DR is really, uh, at CKM rather, is doing a great job early on to the matchup. They they understand that mid game, late game, it's really hard for them to scale out the enemy team. So right now they're just punishing the enemy team, going in for lane to lane, going in for ganks, and even the mid laner is adjusting <laughs> against uh, DR esports at this point in time to try and get for those kills. So yeah, so it's just a smart move coming in for CKM. Yeah, the more I think about this, I, I think this looks really good for CKM, right? Because they have the early game in every single lane they have an advantage maybe with the with the possible exception of the mid lane um but draven is one who can could ridiculously blow up because of the fact that his passive gives him more gold right so if he starts getting it ahead he just gets even more ahead because of that gold advantage so this actually might work out for them if draven just pops off and just starts doing ridiculous damage ck might be able to take this and it, that wouldn't be the first surprise we've seen this tournament obviously Already Sengoku having a bit of trouble getting out of their their uh, match earlier. And we had next play in round two fall to Omega. And we thought that, you know, after game one, next play was going to dominate them. It turns out that wasn't the case. So, yeah, you know, it wouldn't be the most surprising thing this tournament to have CKM come back from, you know, a, a botching or a bopping in game one and, and actually taking game two here. Mm -hmm. And D2, three minutes into the game, there's no kills yet coming in from that Draven. And I think the the one reason why this is the case is if you're looking at the support of Draven. That's the Lulu. What's gonna be the initiation of Lulu? 
probably none, right? Because typically, if you want to go to the early game matchup, you have the Blitzcrank paired up with the Graven, right? With those two pairs, you have the hooks, you have the synergy, you have the initiations early into the matchup, which you can scale out. You could get those uh, utilizations of your skills to really get those kills. But having that Lulu as a sport, I don't think it's really up for those synergy against uh, DR Esports on this case. Yeah, apologies guys. Both of us casters have lost our uh, screen share feed, so we're we're li literally looking at a blank screen right now. Yeah. And and a couple of Discord boxes turning around in circles. We we're literally we have no vision. We're just, we can only yeah. kind of. Uh, we are restarting that in a little bit. Sorry about that. Uh, Discord won't be disconnected. <laughs> little the Discord box all the time. So, but those teams are fighting for over the dragon right now, and it does seem like Shivana gonna get that. Uh, very exciting team fight right here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, restart Dave, the what is it for the Discord. Tell us, Dave. Sorry about that. Start restarting team. Restarting right now. Fit with Ocean Drake actually being secured by CKM. They're going to get the first objective, but Olaf is going to be stayed. Mention, uh, delay. Our, our, our cast is delayed. Uh, yeah. D2. So, sorry about that. A little bit of technical issues on, on, the, <laughs> on the side, but we're going to try to get it resolved as fast as we can. I'm, I'm currently yours, watching. Yours is delayed. I'm looking at a black screen, so I have no uh, idea. Right, I'm cool. currently watching. All right, looks like we are actually back here. I, we have vision. Uh, excellent. Uh, okay, so what happened while we were gone? And when we left, it, the dragon was still up for grabs. Yeah. And it was taken, it looks like, by Chakaimuk. But Chakaimuk was up 1-0 mm -hmm. one, one in the kill count. So in exchange for the dragon, they lost two the members of the team. So that leaves us with a gold parity and a dragon on the side of Chakaimuk. And potentially another kill here. As Darius is in trouble, and gonna take get taken out by his brother. Yeah. Oh, always getting betrayed. Always getting betrayed. Absolutely. And this is just a fight for the brothers, right? They, they're quarreling. They already want to get um, ahead of each other, <laughs> right? And I, I think it's just a matter of time where in the art esports is gonna scale out against EKM, and it's just you utilizing this early game potential is gonna put them in a very good spot. Um, but I think. My analysis a while ago has a bit of contrast with it because if if you're talking about mid game late game with the Lulu for the side of CKM, I think they will have that balanced out because of the Lulu. Oh, if they put it onto that Draven, it's gonna put out. Very either. And on top of that, you also have the ultimate, which could really put out massive amounts of damage against the enemy team. Yeah, we see. Uh... Our producer Dave highlighting the amount of gold on both sides. Uh, the the Draven, he's trying to get ahead with the gold, but he, you know, only quote unquote has 5.4k. That that's part of the result of him not getting any kills. Well, his passive kind of dictates that he needs to get kills in order to build up that gold. So it's going to be incumbent on him to do that. Uh, <clears throat> Dr, you know, they're, they're behind in gold, but they had by far the worst. Uh, early game, so the fact that they're staying in this, you know, it's a good sign here for DR. Obviously, they're not being as dominant as they were in game one, but not looking too bad for if you're on the side of DR at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. But the the only thing is you you have that 1.5k gold lead coming in from CKM and also the Ocean Rig that could really just sustain out uh, their teammates at the moment and especially having that Raven early in the matchup with the Ocean Rig could really just sustain himself, uh, keep him alive. Uh, considering that he is quite squishy um, as a champion, you're seeing you're you're seeing the overall strategy coming out from DR. They want to just buff up this Corky as much as mm -hmm. possible. Obviously, Jarvin, you know there, are, there wasn't any intra teammate for a hold that thought for just a second. Draven going in a big engage from that side. There's the ult coming out from the Shaman trying to get in on this side of the DR, but Alex is extremely low. Actually, so much damage coming out from the Aurelian Soul that he had that Greg's actually does go down in the end. Darius 
trying to do his best as well, but falls through this one. He's extremely go, gonna go ahead and turn around and head back home. At the end of the day, it looks like it was a two for one in favor of DR. They're gonna turn their attention over to the dragon. Shivana trying to get back in this fight, but can't keep doing it. Gets does get taken, does go over to Shivana. There comes the old out of his Jarvis, keeping them in place, but he falls down for his efforts. The Alistair can't really stick around for this fight anymore. So the more kills go over to the side of the. Actually, it was pretty even. I think it was an even uh, 3v3 in the end for both sides, and Rift Harrow gets spotted up, up in the mid. Uh, Zinni is going to go ahead and take down this turret. At the end of the day, Chakaimuk, they came out with a pretty decent situation on their hands there. They they take the turret, they get even kills, they're going to put some damage on this turret. Okay, man. Corky, Corky's, Corky's mad, Corky's mad, okay, that's another kill. But yeah, they, they get the dragon, and that is absolutely huge if you're Shavona, because like we mentioned, every single time she gets a dragon, it empowers one of her abilities. Yeah, and the, and I think the cloud rick for Shivana like improves the the AOE skills of hers. So I think it's gonna be massive when it comes to team fights later on. So yeah, it's just a lot on the line. And actually, cloud rick also complements the the Draven, you know, the kiting potentials and trying to catch up with with the axis that he's throwing. So yeah, overall, I think it's pretty good. And you know, we have a bit of a clown fiesta on our hands when. Uh, I look over at Discord and Maxman from the other day saying he wants to cast this. <laughs> and he, you know he loves the Clown Fiestas because we had one the other day. This is turning into quite one. But one with a lot of consequences as, you know, the winner of this gets to move on to the next round of this tournament. It is obviously a match point here for DR trying to hold on in this game as Chikai Mook is definitely taking it to them, trying to come back from game number one. Um, again, things are uh, kind of settling down for the moment here. The Baron is available. I don't think either team wants to go for it, but uh, both teams are kind of on staying the course. Draven, he's uh, kind of building himself as much up as possible, holding onto this turret in the mid. It's going to be a, kind of a battle of the ADCs here. Corky and Draven trying to get as powerful as possible. Corky going to have to try to back off. The mid turret does not fall, and DR is just going to let it go and walk away. Uh -oh. Alistair getting pushed on Palm. Here comes the Draven, or excuse me, the, uh, the, uh, the Jarvan, excuse me, Jarvan against the Olaf. They're going to go ahead and uh, split ways and go off into the distance, which means the Baron could be taking me. Yeah. Baron for CKM dominating the early game, now proceeding to uh, put that advantage in the pocket for mid game, getting that Baron in their favor is going to put a lot of pressure against DR Esports in terms of turrets being taken and considering that there is only one turret taken down by DR Esports while three turrets are being taken down uh, by the side of CKM this is further gonna put uh, DR oh, Esports Corky, at a oh. oh my goodness Corky just gets obliterated there and Chukai Mook aren't done but here comes the re-engage coming out from DR can they make a fight out of this but multiple members are extremely low Alistair's already gone Jarvin sorry excuse me Draven is doing so much work in this fight as Darius is uh, about to fall as well. Gets chased down about there in the, the bottom lane. The Aurelian Soul falls as well. And this could actually just be game. It's a complete ace. Only Corky is potentially available in the next few seconds because he died so early in the fight. We have pink minions pushing in onto this base right now. The package is ready for Corky. Can he make it happen by his lonesome? We, uh, uh, well, he looks like he's going to just uh, stare them in the eye and hold them off for now. Probably was the case that two other members were coming up, but let's just forget that. <laughs> wow. Okay, the inhibitor turret is gonna be taken down in the mid lane, which is actually quite a big. But here, let's look at the replay brought to you by Krovo. Uh, Darius was left alone, went in for the hook. Yes, that was true. But where was the rest of the team? That was actually a good knock up by that Alistar, but at the end of the day, there is no damage being taken. Orelanso was actually late to the fight, so there is no constant damage. And on top of all that, Karki was gone out of the question for that fight as well. So basically just lacking in terms of damage, a good follow-up, but no follow-through. Yeah, Chikai McRae really bringing the fight to them. That was extremely good. Uh, you saw... You saw that the ults came out from Draven right away to make sure that the Corky died. This has been a, just a reversal of fortune. Um, and it, anytime they can take that with the Corky, it makes it so much difficult to support them because that's the entire focus of their farm. But looks like Aurelian Soul is already jumping. He's going to go ahead and fall and drive and pop field, which means that the uh, Shivana looked to be in trouble for just a moment, but they turned around and got the kill in return. That means that Aurelian Soul and the Alistar are already gone. Coming around the pack is the Olaf just being a cheeky, cheeky boy. The Nexus is actually taking fire from some of the minions that this fight continues. 
continues on. Olaf does go down as the fight rages on here. They take out the Darius as well, looking to push their attention on to the Nexus. Potentially, one GA goes off, but that means that the Darius is just going to turn to the Nexus, and that's going to be it. One to one in this series. Chikaimu, they come back from a terrible game one to force a game three here by taking the victory. Yeah, it's just decisions, early game advantage. As we've stated a while ago, going to the side of CKM and transferring that advantage into the mid game. And on top of all that, a lot of, a lot of dragons has been taken by CKM, if not all dragons has been taken by them as well. So Shivana on that one was very smart. Uh, Graven was also very dominant and Lulu to just support those frontliners to support the damage coming in from their team and win it for game number two. Yeah, I, I honestly, I just, I think that this game was potentially lost in the draft. Uh, the combination of Darius, Corky, and Jarvan. Corky ended up being okay, and obviously Gospel has been amazing in these two games, but it just took him too long to get going, and he was getting pushed in in the lane earlier on. That made it very difficult. And Darius was just losing to Olaf, and the Jarvan was doing absolutely nothing. You can take a look at the graph there. Just snowballed to victory. Chakaimuk bringing it back in game number two. This has been a pretty insane tournament so far. A lot of things I wouldn't have expected. I I would have predicted next play after game one yesterday to just dominate the other the rest of the series. I would have expected Sengoku to just win outright 2-0. They had a very difficult time. And I would have expected here DR Esports to finish off the series as well. And every single time it's not been the case. Jakaimuk 